Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. So this particular piece is the wave of colour. It's uh, four sections of ne neutral, the pink, and then it will blend into probably lavender, maybe blue. And then the last section would be the lavender and blue. So I haven't got down to that area yet. I'm still working in these zones. So I thought I might do my wildflowers somewhere in this zone. Now, one idea I did have was popping them between the two sections, starting it off in the whites and neutrals, and then as it gets up into here, it becomes pink. So it's joining the two together. Then I did have a think about something up here as well that is very neutral. So that's sort of where my thoughts are with the prompt wildflowers. So four neutral, and I want um, some gold to go through this as well. So I've got the little snippets from my um, table runner. And I thought maybe this one could be the start of it. Now, the other thing I had in my mind was um, bullion stitch. I really like the effect that bullion stitch gives. So I thought, well, maybe I use one of these as my foundation and sort of to set the mood and then uh, work bullion stitch in around it. So that's sort of where I'm thinking. Let's get this fussy cut out and in position. And then we might grab that um, book, file proof uh, flowers or wildflowers or whatever it was called. It's just near me, so I'll grab it and give you the exact title. Looks like most of you have gone and ordered it anyway because um, it is a cracker. If you haven't, do yourself a favor and grab it because it's just, oh, I've got so many ideas in it. It's great. And what it has shown me is instead of focusing just on one stitch, using lots of stitches, because plants don't need to be looking like a plant straight out of nature in our work, we can really explore you know different ideas and options so let's get this sorted which it is now so I'm thinking that piece can go there now let's grab this book this is the page I had open where it starts to look at bullion knots and how you can layer them in amongst your work to create different effects. I really like that. So it's a pistol stitch and then a couple little bullion stitches just to sort of sneak its way across the top of the page there. But even daisies, like, yeah, it's, it's great. So that's where I'm heading, I think. So I need a pin just to hold this little guy in position. And then I'm going to try and extend the floral effect to create my wildflowers. So I thought maybe I could match, let me zoom in. Maybe I could match this green. Can I match that green? Um, comes awfully close to this one. Uh, no, it's more of an olive. That's nearly too dark. Hmm. I might have to go to my big box of threads. Hang on one moment. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. I picked out colours at the beginning that I thought would be of use to me. But you never really know until you really get going. So I need a pale olive. 
And it's nearly a dirty olive. That makes sense. Like that's that's pretty close, but it's not pale enough. I know that's not it, but maybe it's close. That's that's pretty good. Um, am I missing any others? Maybe that guy. That's better. Isn't colour amazing and how different colour can be? It's nearly... The more I look at it, it's... I wonder if it's close to the browns. I'm sort of looking over here now, in there. If I can get a green brown. Does that make sense? Oh, yes. Look at that. That's that's what it is. It's a, a greeny brown. All right. Gee, we'd never have, never have guessed that. I would have had olive in my head, which straight away gives you a colour palette when you say that word. I would never have gone to my browns. And that is going to be perfect. All right, so we've got the foliage. So what I'm thinking of doing is we need to get out here. And we're going to have, hopefully that'll draw on this, little... How many did she put on that? Clusters of two and then down to threes and that, that makes sense. That's sort of small leading down as you get closer to the center of the plant. So they'll be little bullion knots. In what color? Oh, I don't know, it'll probably be a fairly neutral tone because we're in that zone of neutral. Hopefully I can pull it off. That's a lot of bullion knots. And if you've done them before, you know that they're a lot of work. Then we could do with a bit of a feature flower. So maybe here we do a bullion band and then I like those ones where you wrap more than you need and they become quite twisted like tentacles. So I think we'll do something along that lines there. And then we've got to get ourselves back so it looks like it's part of this. And we need some curves because this has curves. So to make it feel like it's part of that, but then it's just butted out, so to speak. I'm going to do something else here. I don't know what yet, but I'm going to create just the shape of something. I'm going to try and make it quite random. Then we're sort of on our way into this zone. What do we do there? So we're going to have two big feature plants here, or flowers. Do we put maybe just French knots in there, give it a little bit of a, a break? Or do we create another version of a bullion thing? Let's, let's just put some strokes down as if that it is bullion. So we've got a big twisty tentacle one here. We've got a random there. We'll put little stitches on all of those little branches on their way out to those flowers. We may need some little curls. We'll see how it comes together, but we might need some little curls up here that match there. And I've got some gold thread out, but it's probably not gold enough to go with this so I might need to go looking further and see what I can find it's more of a champagne-y sort of tone which would work maybe we do look at that but we'll come back to that 
That'll be at the end because until you get your flowers into position, sometimes your little filler stitches get in your way. So you sort of need to work your big features first. Gee, this is the most annoying fiber because it like floats, it frays. Oh, goodness me. Hello, Casper. That's Casper's just walked in. Hello, Pussycat. Okay, so I think that's the plan. We can put all those bits away because it's only going to be a tiny area. That's definitely going to make any leaves or anything that we want to pop in there. So let's have a look for some threads. That would be a good one. Let's start with that. That's, that's an old crochet cotton that I found in an op shop. And it's really fine if you were doing um, lace on a doily that'd be the thread that you would use so I'm going to get my needle threaded and I might start with these little guys at the top to because that's so fine that thread I think it'll give me the finish that I'm looking for so let's have a go. Let's get ourselves our first. They take time to do, but they're well worth it. So I've come up, then I've gone out to the top where I want my bullion to finish. And I need to fill in the gap between the in and the out of that needle. Now I'm probably very cack handed at this. So it's a case of winding the thread around the needle and you've sort of by eye try and work out how many winds does it take to fill that gap. So does that binding meet that there? I'll do one more for luck. Then holding your fingers on that, the twisted thread, not hard because you're going to pull the needle through all of that thread and it's all going to gather in like that. That's a bullion stitch. Now to secure him down, you just enter in at the top there of that stitch. And that, that's going to be annoying. That needs to be stitched down that little piece of lace. It's going to catch me. There he is. He's in. So we go again. Let's do another one so we come up we go out to the tip and then we bring our needle back through where we came up but just slightly beside it and we start winding now you could count these once you sort of work out that you've got the right length you could count them and it might be 12 13 whatever you think you need and then you know that they're exactly the right size so I'm just supporting all of that wound thread that was on my needle is now between my fingers, just being held there. And now you just squinch it down a little bit so it becomes quite tight. And then anchor your stitch. Let's go again. So we're going to come up. Isn't it the most effective little stitch? We're going to, oops, no, we've got to come from the top back to where we came up. Nearly jiggered it because I was yibber yabbering and wind. And it's roughly the same size as the gap where the red line is on the fabric. I'm going to pop my fingers over the twist. That just holds it all there because what you're trying to do is pull that needle through all of that wrap. As it slowly comes in, it's caught the wrap and you can see that it's tightening up, it's cinching up. Using your finger, you just pull it into line. Okay, so there's three. Now, in the book, there's a pistol stitch. So I think I'm going to use the same thread color the 
because it's all neutral. I don't have a lot of wriggle room for options. So, and this is so fine. So I've come up between my two bullion stitches and I'm now going to do a French knot at the top. So let me zoom in a little bit more. So I've come up, I'm now going to hold my thread and using my needle pointing down, I'm gonna wrap once, then twist my needle back towards me, picking it up again, and then aim for where I want the knot to sit. Maybe I want it a little bit longer. So the flower head looks a little bit more lush and then pull through to secure the knot, which in turn secures the stitch leading to the knot. Does that make sense? Clear as mud, just practice. So down, back to myself. And then down we go. There we go. And there's my little French knots on the end of my pistol stitches. I'm going to do a couple more because I think the first one can be quite a, a large flower head. So we've got another one. That's three. I'm going to do a fourth one out here. What a pretty little flower. So I guess now your options are you could change thread colors to do the next one. You can see where my sketch is a little bit out of whack. I'm already not following where I should go, which is fine. And that does happen with embroidery. Well, it does happen to me. So I need to now sort of rethink where my next one would be and forget about those. So I'd go and apply the iron, get rid of the colour. That's why doing these little scrolly ones is not a good idea. You should really wait until you sort of know where you're heading. So I'm going to skip that one and I'm going to go here because my bullions are actually bigger than I thought I was going to make. So I might try and keep this one a little bit closer to the size I need, otherwise they just won't reduce enough. So let's wrap that. That's three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That might be pretty good. So let's pull that through. I just looked at the camera. I don't know if you saw that. Eight little little windings around the needle. So that's now there. And let's do another one. It can come out here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, lost count, doesn't matter. Let's see how it looks. Looks, oh, goodness me. It's like unraveled. I've lost my mojo. Here we go. I started looking up at the TV to see if you guys can see what I can see. And I'm a little bit out of whack there because I'm pulling it back towards myself so that my eyesight can pick up on where I'm at and in the process, leaving you guys behind. So I might just reposition myself, my chair, and try and keep my hands here. So number two's done. Let's do another one in the middle. I'm going to need to get a new thread after this. And even then I might be pushing it to get this one surprising how much thread these bullion stitches use. Oh, this is going to be close. I'm probably being a little mean with my thread, but we made it. So let's knot that off. OK, 
Okay. So you get the general idea of the bullion, followed by some pistol stitches. Okay, so there they are there. So we've got six little bullion stitches and then I can pop some pistol stitches in amongst them. Do I keep going or do we change? How are we going for time? 20 minutes just to do that, my goodness sakes. Now we might pick another thread and we might, yeah, use another color. All right, I'm just need to pause the video. My doorbell's just rung, so I need to see who is wanting me. Won't okay. be moment. I'm back. Now, I think that was 20 minutes. I probably should have looked at the video, but we'll assume that it was. Now, what I want to do next, oh, I, while I was coming back into the room, I got the iron going, and I got rid of those red marks that I wasn't really following. Why can't I thread the needle now? Okay. So, we've now got a clear mark of where this is heading. So, what we might do is I might do those little pistol stitches while we think of it. Otherwise, I'll move on and I would have forgotten them. So, just a little stitch up in here. The other thing I grabbed was my beads. So I haven't yet played with any beads in any of these pieces. So I have now some beads. This is going to be the most unusual wallflower. Those pistol stitches are barely noticeable there. They're good here because they've got their own space, but there they look a little bit muddy. I'm going to undo them because they need more air between them. My picture is getting too clouded. So I'm gonna just Pull them out, so bear with me. They would have bugged me, they would have annoyed me because they're just not right. I'd rather catch them now. Okay, let's try that again. I think they need to come out double the distance of the actual bullion stitch. So let's try that again. I'll get in there. I might even anchor them there so that I'm away from down in that flower itself. That might help. It'll put a little bit of air down into the center. Yeah, that's better. Yep. Now it looks like it's a stamen coming out of the center of some little leaves, if that makes sense. Whoops. Okay. And done. Heaps better. Okay. So let's get our third one in position. So coming up. And then wrapping. then I should probably move on to another section because I could waste an hour fiddling around with this. It's just not riveting viewing. I guess I could stop and start and join the video and then you'd see a lot more, more bang for your buck.
Okay. So this one, I'm going to do just two and I'm going to make the pistol stitch just two of them in the center. Goodness me, you're getting shocking viewing here. I'm not an embroidery teacher. <laughs> I'm just not doing it easily for you guys to learn from. It is winging it. Alrighty, that's good. So just a little tip. I could even take another one, which I think I will. I'm going to take it out onto that satin ribbon. So it feels like we've got the very top of something happening. But I'm just gonna do the one, I think. It'll sort of make the eye I think that we've come to the end of that sprig, I think. Yep, that's good. Okay. So let's end him off. Now, I want to do a bullion stitch that... Oh, look, I'm starting to wrap as if I'm doing a bullion. We don't need that. We just need a couple little stitches. It's because I started thinking about the next thing. I want to create a bullion for you that looks like a lump of spaghetti twisting. And how they do that, like something in there. So I need a colour that is neutral, but can hold its own. Um, and do we do a wool one? I don't know how well it'll work, but we'll give it a go. It'll get it nice and chunky, I guess. I've never done one in this type of thread. Why is that not coming undone? Okay, let's get ourselves see what it looks like. If we don't like it, we can chop it out. Hopefully I can use the same needle because that worked really well. Meaning the shaft is very similar to the eye of the needle. So there's not a big head of the needle to pull through the bullion as you've wrapped it. So let's have a look. We'll bring it up here. We'll go down here. Now the trick with a squiggly one is you wrap a lot and you wrap more than you think you need. So the gap between the needle and it coming back up is now irrelevant because you want this to actually wriggle around and look all like tentacles, maybe off of a octopus. That's the best way to describe it. Probably not, but you get the general gist. So it's all in my fingers here and I'm just pulling it through and slowly bringing it down. And what you get, like I could have wrapped more, what you get is a wriggly tentacle. See that there? You remember back in the day, you would often see wedding dresses where they'd have a beautiful pearl button and then there'd be a little loop that would catch that button, like a little loop that looked like that. Well, if you have only just recently found my channel, you wouldn't really know that my grandmother was a wedding dressmaker. That's how she supported their family. They were dairy farmers, but sewing was a great way for grandma to bring extra income into the family. And she would often use, well, she would always use a bullion stitch to create the loop 
to catch that little pearl button. So if she had pearl buttons down the back of a wedding dress, she would use I have pinned myself with that needle and now I have a little drop of my blood on there. Oh, bugger it. So now I'm going to have to do a spot clean. Goodness me. As I was saying, Grandma would do a bullion stitch to catch that uh, little pearl bead. I could just about do with a bigger needle, needle so I had more shaft to wind my yarn onto. Does that make sense? I can't believe I pricked my finger. I bet you're all doing it. I bet you've sustained numerous injuries from needles. It is a hazard. It's okay when you prick your finger at the back of the fabric and then you like realize that you've done yourself a little injury. But when it's on the front, it's very disappointing. So. I'm just going to wind that guy. So the yarn's made a beautiful, a beautiful bullion stitch. You see that there? It's got a variegation about it. So what I might do is I might try and get a second one, a second layer coming up in the center of it. I may not have given myself enough room and have I run out of thread? Well, I should be able to pull it off. Let's give it a go. I don't know why I'm so measly with these threads. It's probably creating more work for myself. Pretty good. Makes a nice stitch using the yarn. Other, yeah, well, yarn. I'm not sure what that one is, if it's gum nut. Yeah, I think it is. I think it's gum nut yarn, which is an Australian company. Mm, like that. Can we get another one? No, stop. So I'm going to end that off. Can't believe I pricked my finger. And I nearly did it again right there. Oh boy, oh boy. We're going to get to the end of this six months and we're going to have band aids on all of our fingers. You watch. This is dangerous, this work. Very dangerous. Just need to keep our wits about us and that's half the problem, I think. You look up to the TV to see what's happening on something you're watching and then bam, it bites you. Okay, so I'm going to attempt to do another one. Did I put a knot? goodness sakes okay let's try that again let's bring it up here and then we're going to come out here with our little start the wrapping attempt to avoid the sharp end of the apparatus we are using here okay so if you wanted a tentacle or a bullion that was really loopy 
you would probably have to do three to four times more than what you're seeing me do here. So I'm just looking at the book. See that there and how it's twisting on itself? The twists needed for that would be heaps and even that to get the little bump. Lots and lots and lots of thread. Okay, so I'm going to finish this guy off and then I might pop a few little French knot stamens, so a pistol stitch in the top there. And I might go back to, or maybe I bring a gold thread in. Let's try some gold. Wish me luck. It's not the easiest thing to work with gold filament or threads that are filaments. This guy is a DMC. He's from Spotlight. I need to knot that. See, they already feel like they're getting away on me. to a bigger needle yeah let's not make it hard for ourselves oh, good. look at it it's just oh, oh, oh this is degree of difficulty very high here guys let's have a go if we hate it we'll snip it out but we'll give it a go so now I'm going to do my knot That's pretty good. We've got him. So let's do a bigger one in the center. That was reasonably successful. Where are we going with this guy? Might go slightly at an angle. Oh, I lost it. Start again. Okay, I was getting too confident. Mm-hmm, got him. And again. And secure him. And again. I think we'll get one more down this side. So down, turn back up on myself. And in, tighten everything up, and great. There we go. We got him. So let's just finish this off and get out of here before it unravels even more. What a pleasure that was to work with. Hmm. Okay, so that's the start of something. Now, I think we'll do a bit of leaf work next. We'll leave this at six strands because I think we need it to be semi, um, what did I do with my original needle? Semi chunky to blend between the really fine and the really thick work. And what I want to do is I want to make that flower look like it's connected to something this time. So I think I'll do um, a little bit of satin stitch over the end here like so just to give rid of that pin look how bent that pin is gosh it gets pretty rough in my craft room things get bent and broken and fingers get jabbed I 
Okay, some little satin stitches. And because I've used six threads and I haven't split my DMC cotton, it works up really quickly. So there is a little base to make that little flower head look like it belongs to something. So what we might do is maybe do some stem stitch to get us back to the body of the piece. Like so. Like that. So where are we heading? Let's curve and come back into there. Well, I guess we don't have to. the most crooked stem stitch you will ever see but that's all right where there's little kinks like that there are perfect spots it's not even stem stitch I'm doing a running stitch here guys step stitch is where you go back over yourself to build your stitches this has turned into a running stitch, which I think will do okay because the six threads are here. I don't think you'd want it any thicker than what I'm, I'm getting. So we're just going to bring that into here. Because then I can connect that guy into there and he'll be the same little bullion stitches to some degree like a bud of this fellow so then on that bend here we might start working some little leaves okay so that looks like it's now starting to connect which is good the little scrolls, I'm not sure what I'll do there. I actually, I know what I'll do. So let's end off that little twig. Before we do, I might just pop a little leaf there. How are we going for time? Good, so we've still got 20 minutes to go. So I just want to maybe cut this down to three strands I'll do f yeah no I will do three because it's a tiny little leaf if it's too thick it will um, make the leaf look so chunky that you won't see any defined shape especially if you want it to be a feathery little stitch so let's give ourselves a little twig that we come off to catch the leaf. Okay, like that. Now what are we going to do? Maybe we start at the top here. I do want to do a flower through there. So we've got to give ourselves a little bit of room. So this is the start of a little leaf. So let's make him a bit prickly. Otherwise my work will be too chunky. So like a little feathery stitch, like so. Maybe another one. Yep, so just something soft. I think that looks good. Yep, so we can work that wherever we need it. Maybe I need to pop a few up the top here with those little bullion stitches. So that's got potential. Okay, the next thing I want to have a play with is some beads and see how we can get beads into it. So I grabbed out um, a little plain muted looking little bead 
and I also grabbed out a little shiny one. And now I need a beading needle. I hope I haven't had the camera too close and you've missed a heap of detail. I think I need a smaller one. Gee, I'm well prepared, aren't I? Yeah, no. Look, I'm going to pause the video and get my beading needle. I'd say it's disappeared into this. And I don't want to waste time looking for it. All right, guys, I will be back in a second. Okay, Bye. I'm back. So I've grabbed my gold eye milliner's needles and I've got a range of sizes on here, three, five, seven, and nine. So I've picked one of these real fine, like straw-like needles. So it's got a really good head for beading. So now I just need to make a bit of room for myself so I don't spill beads everywhere. And I'm going to pick up three now they're not expensive beads so their sizing is all over the place if you want to have your sizing uniform you often have to pay quite a bit of money to get beads that are all uniformed but these will do the trick and I've just threaded three on and I'm going to stitch them down but I'm going to come back through that cluster of beads again for a second stitch. It just holds them into place. As I said earlier, my grandmother was a wedding dressmaker and she beaded a lot of lace bodices. So she would always say to me, do two stitches through everything because if something happened at the wedding, like the bride was hugged and one of those stitches went, it'd be very embarrassing to have the work. I can't get this needle threaded. Goodness me. The work start to unravel. So she would always, always, always put stu two stitches in. She said, you just have to. I'm flat out threading this. The eye is so small. So, got it. I might just unpin this because it's got bits that are going to get caught in my needle and thread. And I'm going to just end up damaging it. So I've got my two stitches in. I know when my wedding dress, she, I was lucky enough to be the eldest of the grandkids. So I was able to have grandma make my dress and she beaded that thing like, oh my goodness. The train was all ruched and it had little pearls holding the ruche in position. Oops, that's not a big enough stitch. Oops, start again. So when I took that dress in to be dry cleaned, the dry cleaner said, I have to tell you, darling, that when this dress comes out of the bag, having been dry cleaned, you will have pearls and um, diamantes or, you know, bits and pieces. I'm just going to stitch those two down because I'm starting to make a curve there. So it won't hurt that. Yeah, so in goes my dress and I thought, oh gosh, I'm going to get a bag of pearls back, which is okay. Grandma was still with us, so she could help me stitch them on. Anyway, I go back to pick up the dress and the dry cleaner, he says, oh my goodness, he said there was not one pearl that came off that dress 
he said he hadn't seen that for ages and I thought well there you go that's because grandma handmade it and grandma said always always put two stitches in your beads and that has just stuck with me it's real old school I actually remember hearing Rachel say it once too when she was beading on a project a little while ago now. It wasn't part of the Roxy's, I don't think. And I heard her say it. I'm like, there you go. Good old school teaching. Those fundamental basics that just make your work. Okay, so we're starting to build our curve. So beads make great talons. It takes time. It's tedious. But it's so worth it. There we go. Feels like I'm working on a a bridal bodice without that second thread too you find that your beads wobble a little bit so it really is good to make sure then they're in a position that you're happy with so the second lot of beads I've got here are real neutral creamy little beads so I might use them as like I don't know, maybe confetti, just here and there, like little random buds. We'll see how it sort of comes together for me. The other one I've got out of my stash is this guy. These are sequins that are in the shape of little flowers. I think they would work on this project too. Um, and they're just a case of a couple little stitches to hold them into position. So if you go to my playlist, you'll see a playlist there called Etsy Shares. No, sorry, it's Product Reviews. That's what it is, Product Reviews. In there, I have an Etsy share showing the company that I got these from in Australia. So if you are wanting to build your stash of sequins, they had a really big range. So I'm not sure what their background is and if they're like a staging costume company supplies or, or just a little Etsy store selling something a little bit unique like sequins. So go and have a little look if you did want to get yourself some little sparkly things. Now, there's a bead shop in Brisbane that I use that's fantastic, and she has um, quite a good website, All Beads, it's called. It's at Browns Plains for those Brisbane girls watching on the south side of Brisbane. Lovely. Oh, massive range. The biggest bead store I've ever seen. So definitely worth a little look. But you look, you'll find beads everywhere. And you don't have to pay a lot of money for them. The ones that are like uniformed in size, they can be quite expensive. Especially if you're a jewellery maker. See, they like all that sort of thing. Don't ask me the names of all the different beads. I've been watching a few beading people on YouTube and they use all these words. I'm like, oh my goodness, it's another language connected to the bead world. So don't ask me. Google beading. So there is our little scroll. I think that will work a treat. We can pop a few of those through the piece. These wildflowers are very posh. Let's close them before we have trouble. Yep, that's good. 
that will work. Okay, so there's the start of something. We've got this spray going across the top. We've got a bit of a feature here. We'll do something else up here and a little version of all of these here. So that'll sort of build the story. I'll then come back and do some little tufty stitches, um, another scroll, and then to kick off the party, we've got this little piece, which sort of makes, makes it all make sense. And that little guy, all I'm going to do is overcast stitch it into position so it's not going anywhere it's not fraying because it's like it's been embroidered onto quite a coarse background fabric that's a bit of it there if you remember when I pieced together the the original background so all I'm going to do is just, the same as I did with all those doily bits, is just run a heap of little stitches. And what have I done? Okay, let's start that again. So just a heap of little stitches. So it's like a back stitch that just doesn't have the stroke to create a back stitch. It's just, what is going on? Why has I got a double thread? Goodness sakes. Where am I? I'm there. So it'll take a little while and it'll be a bit tedious, but it's, it's worth the effort to stitch down your embroidery pieces, your, your highlight elements. Well, this is going to come together nicely as we drift through. Will wildflowers pop up somewhere else on the piece? Maybe. I might do a prompt and it just needs something around it so I can revisit wildflowers and add it in. Plus I've got the transition of colour happening so I might find I do a similar sort of little bullion clustery metallic thread bead piece through a different area and it wouldn't really hurt if they were similar because that will tie the piece together it won't look like I've chopped and changed between sections you want the color to change but you don't want your style to change is probably what I'm trying to say so that's come around pretty quick and nice and secure. So I hope you saw enough there to understand what the hang I'm trying to do. Can be debatable sometimes. Sometimes I look back at videos and I'm like, oh my goodness. I can see where my brain has gone off on a tangent and I haven't even finished what I'm doing, let alone finish the story I'm telling. But it doesn't matter. You're getting what you get. You're sitting at the end of my table. We've just had a nice dinner. We've had a nice piece of cake. And we're now just sitting, stitching and chatting. That's exactly how it rolls, isn't it? Gee, there must be some thick lacing under there. It's taking a bit to get my needle through this, this corded lace here. I wonder if my grandmother was still around, would she do a snippet roll like this? Or would she say, I have done enough beading in my career of wedding dresses that that would be the last thing I would create is a bridally white pastel -y. to the end of my thread, but 
that's coming down nicely. So you could really, because this is just a general scrolly area, from this point here, one could drift out as well. Could come through here. You sort of need to forget about the laces in the background now. That's done. We're finished with all that. Now it's about the, the prompt and the embellishment on top of the background. The only other thing you probably need to consider is how you treat those pieces in your background. For example, that guy. Do I leave him with just invisible stitch? And you can see where it's pinched in there. Or do I stitch around him to highlight him a little more? Who knows? We'll deal with him when we get to him. What's going to be needed to sort of finish him. Okay. There we go. So that's stitched down. We've got some beads coming into play. We've got our bullion stitches started. The only other thing that I might have a little look at is are these little sequins and see what their story is. See, they could just be, let me zoom out. Oop, out, out, out. There's one there. Maybe these are just scattered around, like I said, like confetti. And I just pop a few around. Or do I create another little branch coming off somewhere using them? I don't know. And the other bead that I need to have a little look at is this guy. It's a little tiny pearly looking fellow. Maybe I use him in one of these other little flowers and instead of a French knot at the top I put a little pearl, a little bead. That might work a treat. Okay, I think that's enough of a plan for this piece. So I can go off and just start working this whole, I'm just going to focus on this top corner, um, get it all stitched down, and that will be my wildflower prompt. So if it hangs, it will look okay. If it stays on the roll and comes out in your hand and is a sideways view, it'll look okay. Yeah, I like it. All right, everyone, I will leave you in peace. I will link all these videos together now so that you can see and I'll take a few shots of this so you can sort of see where I'm at with the process of it. I might just pop some of these thread colours around in case you want to have a play with this style or you're doing this style. Let me know how many have started a second piece or a third piece. That'll be interesting because um, I think you could. It's a great topic would be a lot of fun. Anyway, I shouldn't be encouraging you like that, but I think you could handle it. All right, guys, I shall leave you alone now. Where's the end? That'd look pretty in the photo, wouldn't it? Yes. Cover up that tiny little mark I made from when I jabbed myself with the pen, uh, with the needle. All right, I'll leave you alone. Have a great day. See you later. Bye.